Kristen Arnett, and this is Rosemary Swift, the iconic founder of RMS Beauty. She's going to be putting an amazing product into the collection that I have going with Alia Beauty. So, without further ado, Rosemary, it's lovely to see you. Hi, honey. How are you? Long time no see. We met nine years ago, if you can believe it. Mm -hmm. And you are tough. an icon to me personally, as you are an icon in the business of green beauty. It's an honor to be here and thank you for being a part of this collection because I can't imagine it being a collection about icons without Rosemary Swift. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. That, that, that means a lot to me. Thank you. So I want to jump into some questions because okay. I know that in the past, what you were doing before you were creating this brand was you were, I'm going to phrase it this way, a big freaking deal makeup artist. Because when I met you, I was nervous. <laughs> I was like a baby makeup artist. I just moved from Milan to New York. And then May Lindstrom told me to come find you and say, this woman's doing organic cosmetics, Kristen. You said, come over to my apartment, honey. And I was like shaking, sweaty palms to meet you. And oh. so, so that's, that's the thing is you started as a makeup artist. And so I'm curious, like, what was that aha moment for you where you thought, I have to create a line. Well, besides the fact, you know, the, the, when I had to create a line, besides the fact that I got sick, everybody knows that story. But one of the big issues was I got really bummed out when I would see these flawless creatures that were 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, and I'd do their makeup. It looked amazing. And then within a few hours, everything looked dry on their face. And I said, what is happening between the moment that I put this product on and then to how it ended up in, in, in uh, you know, three hours later, four hours later? And I'm a lazy makeup artist. I didn't want to retouch all the time. And I thought, these girls are flawless. Why is this happening? Why is there dryness on their skin? And it's the products. It's all these traditional cosmetic brands. And that was the big trigger point. I just couldn't stand dealing with it. And then I started working with um, uh, Victoria's Secret a lot. And I didn't like seeing the fact that their skin on their bodies was flawless. And then you'd look at the face and there'd be this kind of masky thing going on. The, the skin wasn't being mimicked on their faces. And that really bugged me because I could see it on, on the, you know, the monitor. And um, I wanted it to look exactly like their skin on their chest and their shoulders. You have to remember, those girls are half naked. So <laughs> you got to match up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's no hiding it strategically with a scarf. Exactly. Exactly. Right. <laughs> We're celebrating you as an icon. And so I'm curious who has been an icon for you or who has given you that boost up or some incredible advice and what was it that really propelled you forward in this particular business? It goes back into the olden days. You have to remember, guys, I'm way older than most of you. And um, in my day, I was looking at the old black and white books that came out with, you know, your Marilyn Monroe's and all that kind of stuff in it. You know, your your. Uh, even going back to Theta Bear and all that back in the day in the silent film uh, movies. So I was obsessed with the lighting on how those women looked and the way their cheekbones were lit up. And, and I was obsessed with Audrey Hepburn. So to me, that was she's, the, she's my biggest icon, I, I have to say. I just loved her features, and I love the fact that she's elegant, but she's so accessible. You know, it's not like one of these things, you know, you know, you see somebody elegant, you kind of go, ooh, you know what I mean? With her, like, there's just a friendliness and, and, and a very sophistication in the way she dressed. It was very simple. So my whole philosophy, my whole life was because of her that, you know, that elegance meets simplicity, not having to be overdone, just being just being yourself and, and still emanating this mm -hmm. beauty from yourself, you know, without, you know, try too hard kind of thing. You know, so that elegance really drove me crazy back in those days. I just was obsessed with, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Well, no, not the 80s. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a second. The I 80s did. was like. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm taking the 80s out. It was fun doing that because I was around actually doing doing the dancers and the strippers back in those days. In, I was going to say, I know some things about what you were doing in the 80s. Yeah, so that makeup to me, when I see that makeup being done, I just think, oh, stripper makeup. <laughs> that's it. You know, that's the truth. <laughs> what was the defining moment that made you realize you created something really special? Um, or 
what's the one thing that keeps you up at night? Oh my God. I'll answer both of those. Keeping me up at night is just going over every single thing about the brand constantly. I'm like a broken record. Um, and the other one is, um, that, that aha moment, I guess you could say would be, you know, I did my brand, you know, I, I kind of started it slowly. I got a couple of, you know, who the hell wants to wear organic makeup from a few people in the industry. So I was like, Ooh, you know, the Debbie Downer moment. And, um, but my big moment was when people were reacting and buying my products and I would, people were on, you know, in stores that come to me and go, Oh my God, what you're doing is amazing. I was just getting such positive feedback that it really made me feel like, Oh my God, I'm on a sign. People are reacting now finally. Cause it was the first few years. It was like, there was a little bit of a wall and, um, and, you know, just, just having the, you know, seeing the sales go up, which is really nice. And I didn't equate that as, oh, my God, money in my pocket. I equated that as, wow, people are really embracing the, the, the uh, so-called green, you know, beauty industry, whatever label you want to put on it. And so that made me really happy. I thought, wow, people are getting it. They're starting to understand. We got a little bit of wool pulled over our eyes in, in some areas of the beauty industry. So that, 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 that makes me really happy. It still does to this day. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I think back back when you started, what, 10 years ago? Yeah, almost 10, yeah. Almost 10 years ago. It wasn't cool. When you say that there were walls up, I experienced those as well. I thought I was going to be the cool green makeup artist in fashion. People were going to hire me for that. And in yep. fact, it was kind of the opposite. I was a little ostracized for it. Exactly. Yeah, so was I. You know, I, and I got, you know, I, I've worked with all those editors from those magazines, and I would go and show my products. And I could just feel they're like, you know, they have to be nice to me because I'm Rosemary in the industry. Yeah. Yet, oh, my God, she's got an organic makeup brand. They, they didn't really know what to do. And I'll tell you, though, now when I go in, it's like it's like I feel like a movie star. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really cool because they understand now they're getting what's going on. Yeah. And, you know, it's 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 very rewarding. But it was I remember crying in the beginning. I was crying. I think that's the most important thing thing that I want people to really know is that it was not easy. There was no bed of rose petals laid out for you, choosing ingredients, creating form, none of that. I remember you talking about just even lids for your packages, you know? Oh, oh that was a nightmare. That keeps me up at night. All the packaging <laughs> stuff keeps me up at night. Packaging is the worst thing in the industry. It's like a nightmare. Be warned anybody starting their own brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm really glad that you did this and thank you for answering those questions. I hopefully it gives people a little bit of insight into that. Yeah, now you're this royalty, this magnificent, you know, all the editors at the big magazines love you, but man, it didn't start out that easy. So thank no, you for it, paving that it path did for not. us. Yeah. Hang in there, everybody. If you decide to do this, go this route, but just hang in there, you know, but I think I've made it actually a little easier on most people because it's kind of now being embrace so oh, yeah it's cool now yeah exactly so it's gonna be a little easier that's not fair <laughs> I got wrinkles somebody from that. had to do it somebody had to do it <laughs> okay ready yeah go for it all right rosemary swift are you a dog or a cat lover or do you go both ways dog <laughs> i'm a dog girl I, I already knew the answer to that, given the I obsession. Say, you know this. We should Frankie. Just for me. <laughs> Frankie, who has a, a boy's name, but is a little girl dog. Exactly. And is adorable. Is Frankie there? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I love this little dog. But look at how scruffy she's getting. She's got to get her hair cut. I kind of wish she would, could be my daughter, man. She'd be such a good makeup artist, all the stuff she knows. <laughs> like a real human daughter, I mean. <laughs> I could have another little Rosemary cruising around. <laughs> right? But she's just retaining it all for another lifetime that she's going to be reincarnated into. Don't worry. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be great. <laughs> Look at her little tongue. Oh, I know. She licks the air. She's weird. <laughs> There's Crystal. What are three words that you would use to describe your personal superpowers? Um forward um uh oh my god creative and also uh stubborn <laughs> stubborn's a superpower in the rosemary book yeah because i don't take no for an answer i was told the whole time doing my brand you can't do it that way you can't do it that way huh 
If I hadn't been stubborn and said, no, I can't, even with packaging, same thing. You have to like, you have to, you know, you have to have your, come into your power through being stubborn. When your mind's determined, or actually I should have had the word determined in there, but when your mind's really focused on something you want to do that you feel in the gut and in the heart and in the soul, be stubborn. Don't tell, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. I think that's going to be the new Instagram quote for this week. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, it's better than some of the other things you could have said. I know that. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I, I just, you know, I love a little challenge. You know, I love to, I, I, I like to get the, you know, I, I like to stimulate people's minds a little. Whether it's angry or whether it's happy, it doesn't matter. I just kind of get off on it, I guess you could say. You want a reaction. Yeah, we need a reaction. <laughs> well, when you get older, you don't care anymore. That's one thing. You know, I don't have anything that I need to protect anymore. It's like, whatever. Like me or like me or leave me, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> That's Instagram quote number two. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is something that you do or that you like to enjoy, but it's something that might surprise people? Are you a secret Trekkie? No, I'm a food addict. My big things, I get in the morning, I go, where am I going to go for breakfast? Or what am I going to make for breakfast? What am I going to do for lunch? Who should I go with for lunch? Hmm, what do I want in that restaurant? Or no, do I want to go to the other restaurant? I have this obsession with food. My whole life just reacts, okay, when I go to that city, I have to go to this restaurant. You know, my whole life's about eating. And it's surprising because you'd think that I would be, you know, a really hefty woman and I'm super skinny, but I think my brain channels it all out in my my my, my speaking and, and my projection. I don't know where it's going, but I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely not a big girl. I'm definitely skinny, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've always been pretty slender. So the fact that you say you're obsessed with food is kind of amazing. Well, my boyfriend used to always say they could not believe how much I ate. They go, where does it go? They, I ate more than them. And when I was a kid, I used to have food eating contests with my dad because I, I was determined not to let him eat more than me. I, I see the superpower of stubbornness coming into that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Huh. <laughs> we might have to unpack that in a different phone call. <laughs> Exactly. That's so funny. Well, all right. Well, good. those are all the questions. Thank you so much for your time and candor and lovely, wonderful rosemariness. Oh, thank you, Kristen. I really appreciate that. And I'd love to see you again. So we definitely have to keep in touch. Yes. And thank you, everybody, for listening.